A few years ago, I read some questions that had been prepared for a study course at a lay meditation center. And one of the questions was, what were the Buddha's Four Noble Truths? Write them down. And what are your Four Noble Truths? Write those down. Then which do you prefer? Which, of course, is missing the point. The truths are noble because they're universal. They're true for everybody. And they address the most important issue that eats away at our hearts, which is the suffering we cause ourselves. This is good to reflect on. Today's the full moon day in the month of Asalaha, in which we commemorate the, the Buddha's first sermon, where he first taught the Four Noble Truths. And one of the listeners became a noble disciple as a result, which is proof that the truths were true not just for the Buddha, but for the disciple. He saw their truth. It was at that point that we had the Triple Gem complete. Prior to that time there was the Dharma, and then there was the Buddha, awakening to the Dharma. And then he was able to teach somebody else to awaken to the Dharma as well. That's the Noble Sangha. It's also the beginning of the monastic sangha. So today we celebrate many events. The fact that the Buddha was a perfect Buddha, in other words, he wasn't just able to awaken himself, he was able to awaken others. We celebrate the beginning of the, the noble sangha, the monastic sangha. And this is the event, as the Buddha said, that where he set the wheel of Dharma rolling. And it was now this truth was out there in the world for everybody who was interested to take, make use of. And the wheel is still rolling. Here we are, 2,600 years later, and the teachings and the Four Noble Truths are still there for us to use as tools to look into our own hearts. Where is the suffering? What is the suffering? What's causing it? Can it be ended? And yes, it can. What's the path? These are the truths that are relevant to all our issues in life, because so often we're driven by our sufferings, driven by the stress around us, and we don't really look into it. What is it that's driving us? Why are we so afraid of it? Why is it, does it have so much power over us? What the Buddha is doing is changing the balance of power. It's giving us power over suffering to realize that it's there. And even though there may be pains and other unfortunate things in the world, those are not the cause of suffering. The cause of suffering is our own craving, which means we don't have to straighten out the world. We have to straighten out our own minds. Not straightening out our minds. We, we are helpful to the world, but if you had to wait until the whole world got straightened out before there'd be no more suffering, you'd die first. But if you can straighten out your own mind, you don't have to die. So here's the choice. These truths are still rolling through the world. As the Buddha said when as a, excuse me, as the Sutta said, when the Buddha first set this wheel rolling, the, there was an earthquake. It make sure it shakes things up in your own heart as well. You're given ideas about who you are and what's worthwhile in life. Let these four noble truths shake those up a little bit. All for the good. Not just not just shake things up for the shaking them up, but just to alert you to the fact that there's a better truth, a truth that you can really use, a truth that does lead to the end of suffering for you and everybody else who takes advantage of it. This is why, in commemoration of that that event, of the first sermon, we don't just chant the sermon, which we did last night. We don't just circumambulate the Buddha, Buddha image with candles and incense and flowers, which we will do tonight. But we also practice. We try putting that path into practice, so we can get the Dharma wheel rolling inside and shaking things up a bit, so that you realize okay, there is this universal truth, and it is true for you. You have practice to the point where you gain confirmation. That's when you too can be part of the Noble Sangha.